Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. As you can see here, I have my Steam Deck, and if you've seen any of my other videos, uh, such as my D-Brand uh, skin install, you can see that this still has the D-Brand leather skin. Still has the tempered glass screen protector. So far, everything's been great with both of these. If you have not seen that video, make sure you check it out. It's up here. I'll have a link. And as you can see here in the back, it's uh, wearing in nicely. Not really a lot of wear. I probably only have like maybe 20 hours on the Steam Deck, so not a ton of hours. Uh, but so far, everything's holding up real good. No uh, skin peeling up, no damage to it. And it's pretty much uh, still nice and grippy. Uh, you know, of course, it's not super grippy like a textured grip, but it does give me a nice purchase. I can hold it in one hand and not worry about dropping it when I'm like, you know, hopping in out of the bed or whatever. Or, uh, or you know walking to and from the bathroom which is a optimal place for the steam deck but uh yeah super grippy and um, you know so far still happy with that and uh but for today you know not no, uh, no more skin type uh reviews actually we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this anchor or anchor however you pronounce that uh it's a hub usb c hub to be uh in, to be uh i guess 100 percent it is the anchor USB-C 655, I believe is the actual name. It's an eight in one hub, and it's got a nice uh, array of different options. So we have on the back here is an ethernet port. You have a HDMI port. This is supposed to be good for uh, 60 Hertz 4K. Then you have a uh, USB-C uh, port right here. And of course you can look on here. That's actually where the, you're gonna put the charger port right here from your charging brick and then on this side we have a number of additional ports and it looks like these ones aren't labeled uh, the same but uh, they actually are all labeled on the front and we have a, uh, a headphone jack which is pretty cool you have a little light indicator on the far right then you have two USB a 3.2 uh, 10 gigabit per second USB ports then you have a SD card port here and in a micro SD card port as well. So it gives you a full uh, array of ports. And really for me, two USB ports is perfect, keyboard and mouse, and then, uh, you know, the HDMI port and the ethernet if you wanna be actually turning your Steam Deck or whatever device you have hooked up to this into a, you know, a workstation, this is really an optimal uh, a setup. Now you have a nice braided cable and a 90 degree USB-C plug. And actually I bought also, um, don't need it, but a little mini extension uh, cable, just so if you wanna keep this you know, way off to the side and don't have, have this brick kind of hanging off the back, that's why I picked this up. I'll have a link for both of these in the description. Now, as you can see here, I have, uh, my Steam Deck is still running. Uh, this is Scarlet Nexus. I believe I picked up on a Humble Bundle, a uh, monthly bundle a while back. I've been playing this, it's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing plugged up. I'll plug in, I have a spare keyboard laying around, spare mouse, I have a HDMI plug over here to go to this monitor right here. And we'll hook all this stuff up. We'll see, uh, does this actually uh, properly project 4K to my TV? Even though I wouldn't really game 4K on any kind of intricate type game, <laughs> anything more than like Tetris, just because yeah, it's pretty decent hardware but I wouldn't try doing some smooth 4K, 60 frame type gaming of anything of a significant, um, you know, AAA title or anything like that with this Steam Deck setup. But I'll just test, can this actually uh, project 4K to the TV? That's first test. Does it recognize my devices plugged into it and allow me to type and move my mouse on the Steam Deck? And uh, yeah, so pretty cool little gadget, not too big. You know, not too heavy. Here is for reference, side by side with the Steam Deck for size. So, I mean, it's about the size of 
you know, one hat, you know, one section of the side of your screen in width. And then it's relatively thin, significantly thinner than the Steam Deck, as you can see here, and significantly lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these plugged in and then we'll take a look. As you can see here, I have the HDMI plug plugged in. I have the USB power cord. This is the one that came with your Steam Deck and it's plugged into the USB uh, brick, power brick that comes with uh, your Steam Deck as well. And this is rated technically for 100 watt. So, but uh, you know, even though it's 100, you're not gonna really get a full 100 watt uh, charging this thing. I think, I'm not sure what the full capability of the charging system for this is, but uh, it's not gonna damage it being over the rated value. It just won't charge it at some extreme speed just because this isn't capable of a super fast charging. Now I do have the extension cord on here. I have a mouse keyboard and we're gonna go ahead and attach it. And it usually takes a minute before it switches over. And notice that it actually projects to the TV and you lose your, your actual image on the deck itself. It goes straight to the TV. Now I'm gonna go ahead and try the mouse. As you can see here, here is the mouse. All right, it takes a second, then flips over, and here is the game. And you can see here, it recognizes the keyboard and the mouse. So it immediately recognized the keyboard and mouse. I didn't have to install any fancy uh, drivers or trying to any funky config changes or anything like that. Pretty much worked out the box. Everything plugged in, projects to the screen. We're gonna go ahead and switch it over to desktop mode and we'll see how it looks in desktop mode, if there's any difference between these. And then I can show you the actual uh, value of some of the settings. As you can see here, And with graphics, it's still showing. If we do full screen, and we can go and adjust this a little bit, but it still limits you on, I believe it's 1280 by 720 in the Steam OS. And we can go ahead and hit it back. Do we see any difference? And we'll go ahead and hit yes. And a little bit, a little bit clearer. Um, and smoother, but of course it is only 720p and it's not going to look true 4k. We're going to go ahead and switch to the desktop mode now. Just switch to desktop mode. Let's see here, it still is projecting the desktop uh, to my monitor. Now do note you have icons here icons there i believe it actually takes it to an extended display so it's almost teach it as a two monitor not in a mirror image and you can take a look at some of these settings here And note, it does show your laptop screen, which is the Steam Deck, treats it like a laptop. And then you have your, this is my Sony TV display here. And you can hit identify. It notes both screens and the laptop slash Sony screens are right here. The laptop Steam Deck screen is 1280 by 800 and then the Sony is running in 4K. And we can switch to the Sony and you can see here it shows it actually displaying at 4K 60 Hertz, which is what we expect with this uh, specific hub. It is, uh, it does tell us that it does uh, 4K at 60 Hertz, and it looks like that is a true statement and uh, an accurate statement. We can go ahead and we'll take a look at console here. 
And if we drag it, as I mentioned, it's a extended display. See, it comes across from one screen to the other. It's not mirroring. Now you can change that if you want to mirror it uh, based on your preference. But if we go ahead and come down here, here is the Linux console and note that the keyboard and mouse and the display is functioning as it should. Now we'll see if we can actually switch back to our Steam OS. I'm gonna go ahead and flip back to Steam OS and then we'll take a look if this thing is charging as it should or if it's uh, not actually charging. I know some docks you can game and have it be plugged in and it won't actually charge simultaneously. So we'll take a look at that. Ran the Steam Deck down uh, a little bit to get the battery level down to below 70%. I have this cool little USB tester. It can give me some amperage, wattage, power draw type info, uh, volts and whatnot. And so we're gonna go ahead and hook this up to the input. And we're gonna take the Steam Deck USB-C charging cable. We'll see what kind of info we get on the screen here. This with the game on, so technically pretty much playing to give us our values here. So it looks like a little over two amps, 14.9 volts, and it looks like it's spiked up to 30-ish watts. Let me see what it actually tells us on performance. And it's telling us 9.4 watts in here. So I'm not sure if that's it, you know, the charging logic kicking in and you know controlling actually how much wattage uh does go but it looks like through directly from the power brick it is pushing 30 ish watts to the steam deck itself you know it looks like it's almost you know 39 watts 33 watts. so it's jumping between 30 39 or so even though here it's showing us now 18 watts so you know roughly half or so of what it's actually claiming. But of course it is charging and is incrementing up uh, as expected because you can game on this indefinitely pretty much while plugged in. And so we're gonna go ahead and switch it up. And we're gonna route it through our hub here and see do we have any different types of readings or is it pretty much the same? And it looks like it says 26 watts, same voltage, 1.78 amps, 1.79. And it's telling us 4.6 charging, but that is a variable value. Every time I bring this up, it's changing. So it does look like it's a, maybe a little bit lower. Uh, we were hitting about 30 and spiking to 39. Now it's showing us a steady 26 and a half. Um, so this may have its own logic in there, maybe dictating how fast uh, this actually charges. Now it does charge fast enough to still increment your, your actual charging. So you are charging while playing. It's not losing or dis, you know, it's not dissipating your charge. So it's charging faster than this thing can actually use it. Uh, so now it's saying, you know, 10.3, 10.4, and uh, you know, saying 75 minutes time to charge, but uh, it seems like it's quicker than that in reality. Like I said, this charging logic in here and uh, and how it actually interacts with here. I'm not sure, I guess this is just the charging logic values. And so it's getting fed 26 watts, but it's not even using, you know, a fraction of that to charge this thing. So kind of gives you an idea, but it does charge it fast enough to actually charge up while we're plugged in through the dock, playing a game, um, yeah, it's not the super, you know, quadruple A title using tons of uh, tons of of power, but this thing is a pretty decent game. Uh, it does have some cool effects, and so it does use a decent amount of power, just like any other game, um, you know, short of Tetris. But it, this thing does seem a lot more stable, so I'm not sure if this is just giving us this more stable input voltage and uh, and amperage versus just right off the brick, which seemed like it was spiking 
you know, plus minus 10 watts. This is a pretty solid, steady 26.5 .26 or so, 1.8 amps. So, I mean, that's always kind of good to have stability, um, you know, what you're feeding into this thing. Maybe a little bit less work on the electronics with the Steam Deck. So, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get the shut down. Take one quick last look at this and wrap this up. That will wrap it up with this Anchor 655-81 USB hub. And really, I mean, everything works on it as advertised. Really the perfect overall uh, workstation uh, conversion hub. If you want to take this Steam Deck and make it into a full workstation capable device, you know, with keyboard, mouse, uh, Ethernet, you want a uh, headphone jack or, or, or some kind of earbud jack, that works. As you can see here, you plug that in, instantly detected it through the hub and slapped it up here as the KT USB audio uh, already pre, you know, instantly set it. These cheap little headphones I borrowed from my daughter worked instantly, no configuration changes needed. Um, so really this has really everything you need and then some most likely, they do offer a number of different um, versions of this that offer a few you know less ports for some less money and so really go for uh you know the option that works for you for the features that you want i'll have a link in the description for a number of these and uh, this is the only one i'm actually personally tested but this one has worked flawlessly so i don't see any issues with any of you know their other ones uh, but i can't guarantee them this one i could pretty much guarantee that it should work fine with their steam deck uh, at least this one that I received picked up off of Amazon. And uh, yeah, so that'll wrap it up. Um, feel free to subscribe, uh, like, share, comment, uh, drop any comments down in the description in the comment field, and I'll be happy to reply usually pretty quick. If you have any suggestions, uh, leave those in the comment box as well. And um, you know, I'm always open to some cool uh, suggestions or uh, advice or anything like that on really anything, Steam Deck, PC, gaming, uh, even my car stuff. Uh, you know, always happy to see the comments. And uh, yeah, as always, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.